pleasure to be here. I want to um, start with a small question. How many people here are working in clinics themselves? That is super. So it's everybody. So this is good because I'm, I, I made a short presentation just for you. Um, and it's a practical presentation. And it, when I designed it, I looked at the entire program and I said to myself, what do we need to do at the first thing? We basically need to open your eyes. We need to uh, share sort of the state of marketing and digital marketing in the world so you all know. But I also want it to be a little bit concrete. Um, so what I did was to develop um, this talk, which talks about habits. And uh, it's basically starting from the work of uh, Stephen Covey. How many people here are familiar with him? You know him? If you're not familiar with him, you should. He's like the guru of effectiveness. Uh, he just died uh, last year, I think. And he wrote the seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, and he also added up an eighth habit, which is good. I'm going to relate to that at the last slide. My own perspective is that every business and every enterprise basically needs marketing. It needs marketing. And specifically, digital marketing. So first of all, that's sort of the base. Second, we all have different marketing goals, and it's not the same. The marketing for a small clinic in Cleveland, Ohio, is different than the marketing of uh, uh, Milton in Hong Kong. It's completely different. It's something else. The audience is different, the goals are different, etc. And the key is to connect the whole thing together into one system. I want to start, actually, by quoting one research. Again, one of my students, without even knowing that I'm in this business, initiated a research project where she actually works. And she convinced the team over there at the, their unit. It's very interesting that the medical people, like thousands of people, are writing papers. I know it's very confusing. Anyhow, Jana is a, a, my student. She initi initiated this research. And the goal of the research was to understand the pattern of internet use among Israeli women undergoing IVF. Very relevant, I think. I'm not going to delve into the details, and I promise I'll send you the link to the author, uh, because my point is, again, not so much the actual research in the field. But what they did, basically, was to ask 100 women. Actually, I just read the, the research again today. Only two people do, do not have internet of the 102 that, that, that period of time. So it's, it's 100 uh, of 102. And I'm not sure you can actually read that very carefully, but this is the type of website they looked for. Information in education, medical and virtual community, an online support group. Um, and what you see is that 62 out of the 100 and so, this is percentages, um, used at least once a month, 43% once a week, 60% used two sites for the same purpose. So the bottom line of this is that people are using the internet before they come to the clinic, during they come, and after. So this is a fact. The other side of the research is a, a bit more interesting. And this is basically asking them, did you feel optimistic, relieved, in control, supported, and then, of course, worried, confused, and overwhelmed. And what we see from this research is that a large chunk of the population, let's talk about these people, the internet made them more negative about the treatment. This is a classical case of TMI. You know what TMI is? Too much information, exactly. And this is the kind of problem we have to face. People are looking for information, they get information, I'm not sure they know what to do with it, but it clearly influences not just their purchasing decision, whether to go to your clinic or your clinic. I think it affects their mental mode. It affects their availability to conceive, etc., etc. 
Every business, and I'm looking at IVF as businesses, needs to bring clients in. That's clear. Good marketing brings the right clients and the ones that you want. And trust me, you don't want everybody. You really don't. I'm sure you know of these clients that cost too much. You really want the right clients. Good marketing is a second step after you have a strategy. So you first need to have a strategy. Now, this is not a course about strategy or a lesson about strategy, but you first need to have that. You'll develop it on your own, and you come up. But you may ask yourself, do you want more clients, or are you OK? Do you want more profitable clients, or are you OK? Do you want more special clients with certain conditions because you're conducting a big research, and that's OK? You just have to make the decision. You have to remember that clients cost money, and bringing clients in do cost money. So you have to sort of think about that, the strategy. Now, digital marketing, which is the topic of my talk, is part of marketing. It's a new frontier for marketing. And it's a new frontier because it changes the way the customer appreciates what you do. It changes the way. I would say that in IVF case, it changes the treatment. Because if they feel comfortable, if they're happy, there are better chances. Also, if they feel comfortable and stylish, they'll be willing to pay more for the same amount of work. Of course, different settings call for different variations, but the key point is to define the strategy and then define the marketing strategy and then define the digital marketing strategy. And in order to do this, I want to go back to the original Covey model. I think it's a wonderful model as a unifying framework to think about digitally. First of all, a word about habits. When Covey talks about hab habits, he, it means something that you do almost automatic. You do as, as, a, as a clinic, as a marketing. So you, also, you do it all the time. You don't have to think about it. So his goal is to arrive at a condition where you think about everything. It basically has two parts, the bottom and the top. And the bottom has to do with me and the clinic, and myself, and my goals, and the way I look at the world. And the top has to do with the others, with the market, with the audience, with my customers, with my partners, etc. So his model is really a combination of me and the other one. Let's start with his number one habit. Be proactive. Be proactive. And in fact, all of you are now being proactive. Because somehow you saw an ad, you saw a leaflet, you got an email, you thought that marketing is important, and you're here. Great. What does it mean to be proactive when we talk about marketing? What does it mean? I'm going to ask specific questions. Specific people. What does it mean? What does it mean to you? Yes, you, you. Yes. What does it mean to be proactive when it comes to digital marketing? Every one of you has a different way of being proactive. But if you want to examine if you are really proactive, I have the oldest trick in the book. Look at your calendar and see how many hours in the week have you marked for marketing. And of that, how many hours did you mark for digital marketing? If the number is not too high, not good. Not good. Now, of course, the big clinic, if you have a marketing person, that's fine too. But still, as managers and owners, you need to pay attention. So make sure you make the time to be proactive. That's a very important point. Number one, exercise of defining the goals is very important because before you utilize the different tools, you have to define the goals. Now, this is a hard exercise because you cannot let everybody know. It just, it's impossible. You don't have enough money to do it. 
You have to select what's the right way to do it. And of course, it depends on your own setting. Goals can be professional. Goals can be academic. Goals can be business-wise. Who is the audience? Who to talk to? How to connect with the people who influence the decision makers? Do you want to work from a personal brand of the key physicians or something like that? I will give you an example uh, from my own personal site. When I started the site, I had the question of what to put there, because I do a lot of things. And at the end of the day, I decided that my site is going to be 80% professional on one of the things that I do, because I wanted to make a, an influence on the world in that area, which just happens to be virtual world. Now, I do many things. I do strategy, I do investment, I do ventures, I do marketing, etc. But if you look at my site, it's only about this one 80% thing. And then 20% other things, what I call personality, things that I like, etc. But that was my decision. Let me give you another example concerning this. When I did this, you know what was my goal at the time? My goal was to prevent people from asking me to send them my presentation after every talk. That was my goal. I said, you go to my website, you can take it out. Two th years later, I changed the goal. Because of the feedback that I got, and the leads that I got from the website. It became, instead of a pipe to send out information to the world, it became a sensor to get information from the world. Why? Because people saw that I'm doing this and this presentation, and they would start sending me materials to augment and enhance the presentation. So instead of the original goal, which is to publish the presentation and save me energy, it became a mechanism to look at the world and find the right information in the right topical, topical areas. And here is the next lesson about goals. Goals change from time to time. And if goal changes, your marketing changes. And it's basically an ongoing process. It's not one thing. It's ongoing. And especially it's ongoing because the digital world out there is shockingly confusing. Shockingly confusing. What is your name? How many people here have Pinterest account? Very good. I have no idea what you do with it. <laughs> but it's a good thing, right? Very confusing. Very confusing. Quora. How many people here have a Quora account? Okay. Very good, too. Very interesting, right? Different. It is practically impossible to master the field. Even the expert don't master the field. Very difficult. In fact, it's an ongoing process just to make a decision to what tool do you want to pay attention or not. Ongoing process, just to, just to decide that. And certain tools match certain goals better than other tools. And in order to prevent the chaos and the confusion, because you can always strategically plan for two years and then do nothing, it's very, also very common, you have to put first thing first, which I think is perhaps the most uh, interesting advice that uh, Kovi has given us. You have to start with something, and you have to start do it. It's not going to help you to analyze this forever. It's not going to help. Because you are never going to understand it completely. Trust me, I don't understand it. You have to start doing. And by doing, you learn about it. One hour a week, go to your Facebook of the clinic and add two items. That's it, as a start. One hour a week. One hour a week spend on examining a new tool, whether it's good or not. Just, just think about it that way. That will advance you um, uh, tremendously in understanding it. Later, you'll, you'll get a feel of it, and you'll be able to process it, maybe outsource it to somebody, maybe share it with somebody who works in the clinics, etc. 
Moving on to the top interdependence is where you start connecting with other players in the field. Now, the example that I'm giving here is from my own work. My own work. You'll need to develop your own examples. It's not going to help you the list here. When I started my blog, again, initially I did it alone, nothing, no connections to it. But suddenly partnerships emerged. There is this very famous site in Israel called Saluna. It is a blog-oriented site for women. Really, this is actually uh, what, what they do. And I collaborated with them to repost some of the things that I do, which are very technical, from time to time. So suddenly, the same materials that I wrote, and I spent the one hour, is not just published in my blog, it's published also in somewhere else. Which, in turn, brings me more people to my blog, which can grasp the whole thing. One example. A journal. Some journal. I collaborated with them. At the end, I, I got the whole journal myself. That's a, a story that emerged later. But initially, that's what I did. Collaborated with other people based on the data that I have. Marketing in the new age, especially in the digital age, is about sharing and collaboration. I would say that 50% of the energy of what you do in digital marketing needs to be with some other people, some other bodies. You get bigger bang for the buck that way. How do you connect with others? Who are the others? And how do you connect with them? This is the longest tip that he has. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Ask questions. Ask questions. Today's digital marketing is not about answers always. It's about asking the right questions. If you're able to ask the right question, and have 10, 20, 30 people answer that, you have 30 people who are your collaborators. Their answers will enable you to develop a better understanding of how to answer the community. They are sort of representative. These people are vocal, they want to participate, and your answers will be more authentic if you connect with them. This is the example that I take. Slides from previous talks. That was the beginning. But then I started to get input. I started to listen. What do people want? Here's a very interesting tool. It's called Clicktail. By the way, an Israeli startup. What Clicktail does, once you incorporate it into your website, it tracks the motions of the mouse of people when they are looking at your website. And you can see, this is my blog, by the way, and you can see that on the name, people hover. I mean, why would they hover on my name? But they love it. I do not know what they do. So when I seek to understand, it doesn't mean you need to ask them specifically. You can digitally follow them. You can investigate their actions without them knowing about that. Not sure if it's uh, ethically approved, but, but you do that. Go ahead. Question, is this a, a or no. Mouse motion. mouse motion. Not clicks at all. This is called the heat map. Heat map. By the way, you can see very easily these things. You know what that is? This is scroll. This is scroll. Because the people, the mouse happens to be here. They either scroll down. This is the, what they do. So this is how you understand what they are doing. Pro probably, I don't know. Probably. 
Of course, another tool that is a must is Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a free tool by Google that allows you to measure very precisely what's happening in your web, various websites. I'm not going to talk about it, but it gives you number of visitors, etc., monthly, hourly, etc. Synergize. Synergize has to do with utilizing what you do in digital marketing in many ways. So once you have published something in your website, you may want to tweet it, and you may want to do LinkedIn, and you may want to do Facebook, and you want to encourage a discussion, maybe take a picture of it, post, put it in Pinterest, or whatever, something like that. What's nice about digital marketing today is that the same energy that you invest in the original content can take you to many places. You just have to be aware of where are the things and what do they do with them. Perhaps the most important tool for me personally is a small tool called Hootsuite. Now, Hootsuite is a wonderful professional tool. Professional tool, costs $9.95 a month. And what it does, it allows you to post the same item to LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter at the same time. So you don't have to go all of them. It also allows you to pick up information from the web and turn it into action. It's a very sophisticated tool. Now, I have been using this tool for a year now. It's really very effective, saves time. Initially, I started to posting here and then posting in Facebook, and then, but, but it takes time and energy. So I quickly identified this. What's interesting about this is that this tool used to be called Ping. And it simply died after two years. It was a very nice tool. But it ended up. Luckily, Hootsuite bought them, bought their data, and suddenly I got an invitation from them to join in. They gave me three months free, and of course, I got hooked, and I'm paying them. So that's the, the example. Last but not least, new tools, new views. That's his sharpening the saw. Sharpening the saw. So here's an example small tool, it's called OutBrain. Um, people here are familiar with OutBrain? Anybody? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, the Israeli guys. It's an Israeli company. They are considering now going public at a valuation of one billion dollars. What do they do? It's amazing. Essentially, what do they do? They read your site. Analytically and semantically decipher the content and enable your readers to read more parts of your site. So, for example, if you have a blog or a site, at the end of the item, you will see these four cubes of suggested content. What's nice about that is that it, after certain configuration, you can collaborate with them and actually have them bring in content from other IVF-related sites, which means the content that your user gets is now far beyond what you have given them. There's a little price because they may leave your site and read, but it's a price you may be willing to pay. Why? Because the other sites will also get content from your site. So this is what these people are doing. They are connecting content which is of equivalent value over the net. Now this is the kind of things that you suddenly hear about. Now you have to make a decision whether you want to go to it or not. You have to evaluate the tool. You have to make it doesn't make sense to use it, how much energy you need to do it, etc. You have to understand that things break. Things break. Here's my own site. I had Yesha at Facebook, I looked at it, it was a year, a year ago, zero. Something, I don't know, the connection, the this, the API, whatever. You have to continuously test it, you have to continue to measure it, and you have to fix it. It will happen. Again, not something you did it once and 
you fixed it. <laughs> Almost the end, I want to conclude with specific tips. Very specific. Basic level. Anybody here works with China? Milton, only you, right? Oh, very good. A little bit. So in the Western world, it's absolutely a must in the modern age for every business. And when I say that, I mean it's a must to have Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. How many people have, have Facebook? It's unbelievable, because last time, Zev, I asked the same question, and there were few people. It's a year for, in a matter of a year. How many people here have LinkedIn? Connected to LinkedIn? Great. Uh, Twitter, how many people? Great. What, what's the matter with this side over here? It's like these are just, they're beating you. How many people have YouTube accounts? Very good. So this is the basic. If you're working with China, they have their own sticks. It's like completely different names, but they have exactly the same tools. Fine. Good. Now some cool tools that I want you to examine and come back to me next year telling me how you're doing. Hootsuite, number one, we talked about it. A small tool to allow you to multiple publish your content. MailChimp. And how many people here use MailChimp? Great, great, great. Small tool, free, up to 2,000 names. Free. Where you can manage your emails to your audience. Unbelievable. And when I say manage the email, for every email that you send, you can get afterwards whether they opened it, whether they clicked on it, and on what click they clicked on it. Absolutely free. Event Bribe or Meetup. How many people here use either of them? Excellent. So these are specific tools to organize events. Even small events, 20 people, 30 people, once a month, you can do this through this tool. Google Analytics is a must. I think Google Analytics should be in the first list because you're so advanced. Right? So, it needs to be in the first list. And then absolutely, if you're not using a website, use something as simple as Blogger or WordPress because it's absolutely free and allows you to already jumpstart. So, these are the small tips. And I want to end up with my message to you. Get a unique voice. Get a unique voice. What is specific about your clinic? Because if you are a commodity, not a good thing to do. You will not be able to charge prices. You will be ramped out by people with an agenda and a story. You need to have something that is unique. Find your voice and inspire others to find theirs. Once you have a unique voice, once you have something to say, then you can be effective about it. Right? Because you need to be effective about something. You cannot be effective in general. You need to be effective toward the goal. People often forget that. There's no point in just being effective. You need to be effective towards something. And I'm sure as you're all here, you need to be affected about your marketing. Thank you very much.